Hey guys, welcome back to the Alcohol Free RV. My name is Todd and today we are stuck in Elkhart, Indiana because of a mechanical failure with our RV. We're gonna get into the details of what happened and how we're gonna go about getting it repaired. I just happened to look down as I was getting up and check this out. Four leaf clover. Apparently, it was our lucky day. All right guys, I am on the driver's side of our RV. We were driving down Interstate 80 just outside of Elkhart last night and we saw smoke billowing out from the tires on the driver's side. So immediately we pulled over just to make sure that nothing serious was wrong. And I am really glad we did because our tires down here were actually rubbing together. So I didn't feel safe to try to do anything myself on this because this is a major structural issue. And so we called a towing company to come out and help us get the RV secured in a way where we could get it off the side of the freeway and then into Coincidentally, we were planning on staying in Elkhart last night anyways. So it just turned out that we were close enough we could get the RV to this park, extended our reservations for a couple of days just to make sure that we had time to get the repair done and, well, then hopefully be on our way relatively soon. Elkhart, being the, the center of RV industry in this country, is a great place for this problem to happen. Not a great problem to happen, but if any place it's gonna happen, this is the place to, for, for it to happen. Like there's so much that we have to be grateful for in this whole experience. We got off the road safely. We got the RV in one piece. We didn't have any physical damage to the RV outside of the tires and the mechanical failure. Uh, we did take off the skirting here just so that the tires didn't rub as we we're getting it in. But here's what ultimately happened. If we take a look at these tires, you can see how worn that tread is. It's because both of these tires were touching. This whole axle shifted forward and was rubbing against the front one. Now, why did that happen? The spring hanger here came disconnected from the frame. Well, I guess technically the weld is still intact, the, the, the bracket itself actually failed. It is a Saturday, so finding a, a shop that's open and mobile, because we cannot move this right now. Uh, we don't have the same setup that Tom's mobile RV, or sorry, Tom's towing uh, set something up so that we could limp this off of the road and get us off the freeway last night. Now, I did call Lippert about this problem because we do have a Lippert frame on our RV, and I spoke with a guy named Don over there, and he opened up a case. I don't know what's gonna come of that case, but they were willing to attempt on Monday to go ahead and get us in touch with somebody that can do the repair. Unfortunately, they don't send out people for repair. They're not officially working uh, on Saturdays, so that raised a bit of a challenge. So what we did was we found a bunch of phone numbers of various mobile uh, or RV repair places here in the Elkhart area and called, I think, every single one of them. I wanna give a huge shout out to John at Great Lakes Mobile RV Repair and Service. He is an amazing person and I highly recommend if you have a problem in, with your RV while you're in the El Elkhart area, I am confident that he will do everything that he can to get you back on the road and fix your repair. Now, unfortunately, John is not a welder, but we got in touch with him. He came out, took a look at the problem that we were having and spent a lot of time working to find a welder that was able to come out to us on Saturday so that we could get back on the road. So John, thank you so much for everything that you did for us to try to get us back on the road. You were a critical part of keeping our stress levels down and we really appreciate what you've done. I'm gonna put John's number on the uh, screen here and I'll also put a link to the Google page and if he's got a website, you know, I'll put that in the description down below so that you can reach out to him if you're in need of RV repair in Elkhart, Indiana. Now, 
as I said, John wasn't able to actually perform the repair, so he he called out to, to several welders, um, several other, other people, and in the afternoon, he finally got us in touch with Dale from Fisher Welding, and Dale was able to help us out. So take a look at how that went down. Dale. <laughs> hey, Todd. I'm Dale. Nice to meet you. Uh, where can I get close here? So the problem area is over on this side. Okay. So I don't know if uh, you want to like you kind of back the trailer up. Behind them. Yeah. right here it's gonna save the day hopefully so what we're looking at is that okay and the other side okay they're both uh, kind of screwed up okay I did look at the same bracket on the other side and it looks like it may be a little off kilter tweaked a little tweaked a little may, bit maybe need a little attention to yeah okay um, the other ones, just from my short inspection, is seems to be okay. But okay. let's take a look at them all. All right, sure. Let's make sure, sure we do sure. do it right. All right. Um, any strengthening that needs to be done, you know, I want to make sure that this thing is 100% roadworthy. Right. Because we're on the road for another six weeks. Okay. <laughs> and so we don't want to have this right. happen again. Right. I hear you. Um, well, it almost looks to me like maybe this needs to go up just. A Touch yet. What do you think? Yeah, I didn't line it perfectly uh, because I had it on a jack. Um, and whatever we need to do, because I know welding's hot, <laughs> um, right. whatever we need to take down, I've got the stuff to okay. do whatever I need to to get that secured back up in place. Okay. So, whatever we need to do. Okay. I When I was trying to line it up, I kind of grabbed onto this because it's at this angle. Sure. Right? So I don't know how to address it all. Um, okay. So well, I brought hopefully we'll be able to work together to, yeah, to get it done right. Come along. Awesome. If there's something to hook to. There's a bracket back here okay, that we yep, successfully yep. hooked that the axle work. to that to drive work. it from about 10 oh, miles okay. down the road. Okay. To get you in here. To get us in here. Yep. Yeah, that looks a heck of a lot closer than I had it. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll get my welding stuff out here. I'll get that one stitched. That is finally welded up back in place. And so basically what uh, Dale was able to do 
is he ran a beta weld across the top of this bracket and then added this quarter inch plate steel to kind of strengthen things up a little bit. Now, because he did the same thing on both sides, I don't know if we'll be able to get around here. Uh, so there's back in here, same kind of concept. He's got a plate that he welded on. He did have to pull down a little bit of the underbelly, so use some zip ties to kind of get things back up in place so that that's not hanging down. Um, the, the last part of the puzzle that we need to solve today is new tires. So the tires are going to be an issue because I was so focused on getting the frame repaired that I didn't look to see if uh, any tire shops would be able to help us out on a Saturday. So um, next next up, let's uh, we're going to be finding to see if we can get new tires, even you know used ones at this point to get us to our next destination. And we will look to replace with the same tires that we had. I'm really happy with the way that they performed with this particular problem. And so that's the next step. Got the tires all loaded. We're headed over to the tire shop here in a little bit once they open and we will see if we can't get some tires to replace these. Well, I got back from the tire shop and unfortunately they didn't have the tire size that we actually need for our RV. And it's okay, really, because <laughs> the shop wasn't actually open. It, I went over there on Sunday, just to be fair. Um, they, they did agree to meet with me, which I think was really awesome that they would agree to meet with me at the shop on the day that the shop was closed. Uh, I guess they had some you know, other work that they were gonna be doing, uh, but normally not open to the public. They don't knew nothing about my YouTube channel or anything, but they met me at the shop. Unfortunately, they didn't have what we needed when I got there. Now, what that means is we are gonna be stuck in Elkhart for another day, or sorry, another night at least, um, but we'll be calling to other shops. When Monday comes around, things are gonna be open up again, so hopefully we'll get back on the road uh, probably not going to document all of that in this video, but next week, uh, if you want to subscribe, you'll see kind of the end of this saga and how we solved the tire problem and what we got. And we're going to be talking about some other tire safety things in that video as well. So hopefully you like this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Give us a comment down below what you think about how we approached and what we uh, got done. Have you seen this problem before? And what do you think of uh, just kind of our experience? That is all for this video, guys. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week.